minute and three seconds of goddamn logos. In case you confused it with Mombasa, Alabama. There are like six satellite TV receivers in this alley alone. Either Kenya is more connected than I thought, or else this is a dead giveaway of a hideout. That's what we fight for, guys. You mean they fight so you can come home to a beautiful woman? Because you're the only one that appears to have anyone waiting for them. There's more fiery lens flare here than JJ used in all of 2009's Star Trek, but still, people joke about JJ and lens flare. Granted, nobody saw this here movie, so it's not like this was gonna be the one to change their minds. I'm just saying. He was in Kenya, then helicoptered to a base, and his lady was there and then they drove to Italy? Do I have that right? This is so fake and obviously short-lived and fake and I'm gonna go on a good old-fashioned skip. Okay, f sweet lord of fire, this is some dangerous ass candling in this room, which seems to consist of 82% flammable materials. I don't mind the scars. I just don't like the stories they tell. Considering six of those stories are Fast and Furious films, I'm with you, Gino. I always come home. Why does Vin feel the need to have a catchphrase or repeated phrase in his movies like Family, quarter mile at a time, no following, nothing like fresh powder, or they say most of your brain shuts down during cryo sleep, or I am Groot. He says I always come home about 52 times in this movie. Just saying, at some point, your body can't do this forever. That's when you take supporting roles in crime dramas, or find a mediocre sitcom that can last at least five seasons so you can retire on the syndication money. I left those candles burning all night long! First off, that is clearly a mirror, and this assassin is an idiot. Second off, the mirror Ray's reflecting off of is in the corner of the bathroom, and he is standing right by the doorway on the exact same side as the mirror. At best, it would be catching a reflection of one of Ray's arms. Furthermore, the gunman is coming from the center of the room and probably wouldn't even be able to see this mirror. Regardless, this scene is a mirror of lies. Movie has the balls to steal the bare feet action from Die Hard, but not the balls to steal the all-the-way naked action from Eastern Promises, but then has the balls to steal the slammed head toilet-breaking thing from The Matrix and Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines. And I still don't understand why we couldn't get a Gambit movie before a Bloodshot movie. Crime going down in a meat locker cliche. That's a radio, and not a tape or CD player. So how did they even know Psycho Killer would be the song that was playing when they did turn it on? And how were they able to tie it up so perfectly with Martin donning his coat and the beginning of his approach toward Ray? I know all this is fabricated, but God damn it, Ray doesn't know that, and they shouldn't want him to spot the sin in the scene. I swear I will find you and end you! Vin Diesel's contract negotiations somehow end up in the script. So he's still alive? Didn't he get shot in the face, though? Where's the face wound? Oh yeah, it's all fake. F you, movie. Project Bloodshot. Roll credits. Awake and cognitive. This is, this is phenomenal. Well, I already did a cliche sin, but this is definitely a Guy Pierce playing a villain cliche. And my colleague, Katie. 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 Jesus, this is like the line between Taco Bell and Taco Bell. Pointless and ageless. Katie and KT are so f close that the distinction is the asshole. Your body was donated by the U.S. military. So it's Universal Soldier, but with a deeper voice? You have been given something that nobody else has. A third testicle? A passport to the moon? Second chance. <laughs> oh, that's what you meant. You think no one else has ever been given a second chance at life? What about the Universal Soldier? What about Neo? What about Lazarus? That dude from the Bible that Jesus raised for What about Jesus? Come, I'll show you. You better come take a look at this cliche. Oh, sh that's three cliches already. I can't keep counting them, though, because that'll get wicked annoying. So here's ten cents for all the cliches. May I? Yes, yeah, sir. <clears throat> Hell, Doc. To be fair, you were the one who said, yeah, sure, without knowing what the f you were agreeing to. So the nanites heal his injury, but why wouldn't the nanites have healed up his scars as well? Because he still has those. The mouse had just died. Admittedly, some of the early results were suboptimal. Then why store them or show them to this guy? Aren't you trying to convince him to join your team? Sadly, everything about you is classified. Man, imagine this being true and you went with, I always come home as the catchphrase instead of my f is classified. This is our rehab facility. Thankfully, everyone here is working out right now, so I can introduce you down the line. She now breathes through a clavicle mounted respirator. Makes her totally immune to inhalants. Even weed? Bummer. When you're done with your nap, we'll be downstairs doing our jobs. Man, that is some aggressive assholing right out of the gate. I feel like the character description in the screenplay was simply dial the dickishness up to 11 and keep it there for the remainder of the movie. 13 seconds of Vin trying to act like he's having a moral dilemma. Guy trying to find his strength limitations decides to punch a potentially load-bearing beam instead of doing something with all the tons of weights behind him. <laughs> instead of this making him look hella strong, it makes the film's production look hella weak. Not sure if it's the fault of the props, the filming, or the acting, but it's probably all of them. Point is, it looks like he's lifting giant chocolate-covered Ritz crackers glued to a single pretzel rod. Water sports. You're up late. Yeah, I couldn't sleep. Since we soon find out this is how the scenario always goes down, what happens if Ray actually sleeps through the night or doesn't go down to the gym? <laughs> Holy sh**, Bloodshot's brain is made up of COVID-19 cells, and the movie was released on... Holy sh**. 
What are you waiting for? Go and get him. But since we find out soon this is all an act and Dr. Harding is having Ray assassinate these people that are involved with the project, why is there such a rush to get KT and crew out to fetch him? Also, everyone in this room knows this whole thing is a charade, so why is Dr. Harding acting at all in front of them? Could just be reciting this stuff off of a script at his desk. Do they even need this many people involved? Seems like a lot of overhead here, not to mention a much bigger chance of loose lips sinking the payday ship. His nanites are scanning the global search platforms. <laughs> that is techno babble of the highest order. Wait, 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 hold on a second. You use my tech and scrape to criminal database. That is beyond illegal. But how did Ray know how to do this? He's realized his situation for less than 24 hours and he already knows how to use the nanites to his advantage? And yeah, yeah, I guess this could be something Dr. Harding has embedded in his makeup so he'll do his bidding, but this seems overly complicated. And when you realize Dr. Harding has willing assassins already on the payroll, I start to wonder why Ray is needed at all. I'm sending Tibbs and Dalton after you. I won't stop. I'm just glad I get a chance to learn their names. Tibbs and Dalton. Tibbs and Dalton, Dibs and Bolton, Fibs and Colton, Fab and Blanston, Dev and Barr, Geronimo and Husk. Holy shit, I already forgot their names. He downloads information on how to fly a private Gulfstream airplane, but this is decades after the Matrix did this same thing, and it takes way longer in this modern movie to actually download the data. In case you confused it with Budapest, Alabama. And then he pinged them one at a time, all 9,000 of them. Why? To find the five moving in a convoy. But once again, how would he know that Toby Kebbell was in a car? Could be at home masturbating to really sketchy anime for all Ray knows, or literally anything else. Else, but it's most likely the masturbating to anime thing. Movie dares to ask the question, what happens when a flower truck crashes in a tunnel while two factions of assassins square off? Flower. And seriously, it's crazy how important flower is to this terrible sequence. Like, you know for a fact after watching this, Vin Diesel requested flower over and over until the director was like, it, give Vin some flour. And I'm sure Vin sat back at the world premiere watching this thinking, that's what we fight for, guys. And then he realized that was a line he said earlier in the movie and how everything in life comes full circle when you're this f***ing awesome. And then he came all over the inside of his rented tux and then he started thinking about how much he was going to have to pay the tux guy to not sell the soup with the encrusted Vin Diesel sample or post about it on Instagram. Also, look, flares make sense for light. And this movie wants some snow type action effects. But the fact is, flour is flammable as f***. And the flares or the gunfire that follows would definitely start a flash fire in this tunnel full of flour. I beg you not to test me on that flower's flammable as claim. I plead with you and absolve myself of all legal responsibility if you try lighting flour on fire. I mean it. I don't even know, man. I literally no idea what just happened then. That editing was so quick, even the MCU is making fun of it. Wait, what's that? Oh, he did not see that. Did he even call this guy? He literally just pulled the phone out of his pocket, didn't even dial or push a button. No one be seated during the he beats everyone's ass, but we hyper edited it so that it will be believable because let's be honest, it's not very believable scene. He can't get in, can he? Not a chance. <laughs> what? Maybe that glass is bulletproof, but those doors are still just doors. He appears to have had no issue taking out everyone else. But sure, whatever you say, no-name hired henchman, you hold on to that last pair of misplaced manly monocles and we'll see where that gets you. It's like Terminator 2 saw the nanobot baby face in the Matrix Revolutions and the two of them had a baby that cries all the time and gets bad grades in school. Literally no way he timed this correctly. I'm pretty sure there's more slow motion in this movie than there was actual movie. And yeah, that might not make sense, but neither does this movie, so suck it. Dalton, who hates Dom Toretto with an unreasonable and unknown passion driven by the script, somehow has total access to the tablet and room that houses his equal who was also his enemy. This is quite literally never explained. I get that this is supposed to show Dalton comes in here and has done this several times, but this room is in pristine condition. Clearly they have some kind of cleaning crew or someone who comes in here and takes care of it. So there's no way that the other pieces of gum wouldn't have already been scraped off. Well, you may be an asshole, but you are the toy soldier. Is that an insult? Isn't an asshole worse by far? Is this a trick question? There it is. That look. Dumbass catches on too late. But he's not catching on to anything. You flat out told him what the deal was. He had no reason to believe anything was amiss prior to this encounter. So they can change his memories of the interrogation and his girlfriend's assassination, changing who the killer is so they can get him to go off and kill that person. And that is an interesting premise undone by a super boring movie. Vin Diesel is something, but he's not charismatic. Everything we do here specifically serves a purpose. The training, the alcohol, the nightmare. I know Fine, but how did you figure out that perfect storytelling formula to make it work without it taking decades of failure? Also, why go through all that trouble? Wouldn't it be easier to wake him up, explain what they've done for him, and give him a fake file about the person that killed Gina? Even if he doesn't go for it the first time, knock him out and go through it again. All of this rigmarole seems too complicated for its own good. While KT is resetting his bedroom and she pauses to be sad about this coin, I'd like to point out that she was fine with all this up until now. Remember, when he killed Koba, that wasn't the first time, even though it was our first time. Later, he sees flashes of all the people he's killed, and it's a bunch. So I guess my question is, what was her number? How many people did Ray have to be tricked into assassinating before she thought it was immoral? Six? Seven? 
13. You know what else everyone knows? Six inches is not a lot. Weirdly, movie goes flat earth here and bucks the hard science. <laughs> I said hard. Which says that the average male erect penis on earth is 5.16 inches. So six inches, while not huge, is definitely more than average and would therefore qualify for his story beat about someone taking the whole six inches. This montage of everything that's already happened before can eat my ass. So, uh, do you think I could get some kind of RST tech installed on my body? This guy with his tiny Doc, how are you talking to me? Oh my god, this guy. Such a relentless dick. But wouldn't that be everyone's reaction if someone's voice just started pounding away in your head? I'm okay with this guy being an asshole, but give him more interesting things to be an asshole about. Also, Relentless Dick is A, the name of my college grunge band, B, my general sexual philosophy, C, a spicy Albanian cola drink, or D, the nickname I gave the private investigator looking into my polygamous lifestyle, looking into my alleged polygamous lifestyle. Multiple ballistic impact. Abdominal nanite clusters active. Worth repeating here, how did you replace his blood with nanites but still fulfill all the needs his body has for, you know, blood. They have god-level camera views on this place, which makes you wonder why they need bloodshot to do the killing. Like, find some assassin or armed service guy who wants a medal or a promotion, but using dead soldiers you revived and turned into super soldiers with nanites seems kind of moot when you have this level of surveillance capability. Whoa, someone's been stress-eating. Fat shaming. So he's an IT guy. We're not IT guys, man. To be fair, you just called yourself, uh... He's a techie, just like me. So, IT guy seems more than fair. He's the first guy to figure out a stable bidirectional neural interface. Oh! He's so good, I used some of his open source code in this program. Wait, you used open source code in my billion dollar prototype? Whatever Guy Pierce's name in this movie is would be excellent at CinemaSense. What is that thing? You mean the thing that's huge and has been open on Barris's desk for the last minute and a half and you're just now noticing because you're a terrible bad guy? That thing? I have to charge it. And so charge it! Wait, why wouldn't it already be charged? If it hasn't been used yet, wouldn't it just be plugged in somewhere? I mean, maybe a noob would forget this, but not a techie. Can he hear me? He's muting you. What, how is he muting me? Seriously, and can I mute all of you for a bit? This movie is exhausting in its averageness. So when do bullets take him down and when do they just bounce off of him? Because when the guys were shooting him in the tunnel, he initially went down, so how is this any different? This is a very concisely edited memory dump, even though I'm pretty sure they said they wiped his memory out every time, so what's up with that, yo? I heard them talking. I heard them talking. No one can figure out why each kill was like a vendetta. You know, like it was really really personal. Probably because it didn't need to be, but the villain has to villain in the most complex and ludicrous ways in the action movies. So just reverse engineer the work of dozens of scientists, billions of dollars, and a decade of genetic coding. Movie realizes how insane its plotting is and then decides to double down. <laughs> he just typed Gina Garrison and got one hit. One fucking hit. And since we find out she's remarried and it's been five years, why would she still have his last name? Now remember, he's one of us. He was. Now he's a problem. I hate to agree with Dickhole McDickerson, but he's not wrong. And when was Ray really ever one of them? He was kept in the dark by them, and they essentially controlled his every move. Best case, he's their servant. Now we finally get to use all this Why have you never gotten to use all this before? This feels like a super dumb loose thread. They are an evil assassination corporation using enhanced super soldiers to kill their enemies. And they have programmed him with the memory of his real former girlfriend. Like, why didn't they kill Gina just in case this very thing happened? Why didn't they just program a fake-ass former girlfriend in his memory to avoid this very problem? Mommy. One, one minute. Are you okay, Ray? Can I... Mommy, come in. One... Kids. No need to be covert about this, I guess. Not like they're trying to keep a billion dollar prototype protected and or secret. Eyes are in the sky. So glad that 2019 discovery that Hollywood has zero clue how drones work is continuing into 2020 films. Seriously, we'll be looking back on films like this in 25 years like we do movies like The Net now. This guy spins an entire 360 degree circle before riding off after Ray, who they are pretty urgently trying to catch. So Ray goes to the right, Outlander goes by to the right following him, and Knifey on the motorcycle turns left? Like how many reports of Superman with iron legs are there gonna be after this event? Do they have an MIB flashy thing? Wilfred. <coughs> It's not good for you. Since she had the knockout smoke handy, why didn't she just blow some on these guys and not waste her energy fighting them? What is this place? The Matrix, a wrinkle in time, a meeting with the supreme intelligence. I can't always know what you're stealing from. Man, for a guy that can implant memories, this here is taking forever to render. What, like when it's taken away from you? 
not knowing when it's going to be taken away from you. Is that what you mean, Ray? I love how this movie gives you random reminders that Guy Pearce is Australian. That's a nice touch. He sounds like he just wandered onto the set of a Muriel's Wedding remake. Are there no trash cans in this f***ing building? I wouldn't have to send him after Wiggins if you had done your job. And we find out this was KT's plan all along, to make sure that Ray got re so they wouldn't kill him. But if she's trying to save Ray's life, that is quite a gamble. She failed to kill Wiggins, but how could she know they wouldn't just send her out again? Or send out Oscar Pistorius, the prosthetic leg assassin, to finish the job? She couldn't have known they'd re Ray, but thank God they did. Okay, start the sequence. We'll alter it real time. <laughs> You could lock old Wiggins out of his own code. Almost a full minute of a Wiggins Eric keyboard fight. 20 quid, he just said, Oh Jesus. 20 quid. I need real friends. <laughs> Lamorne Morris is definitely a bright spot in this movie. Remove a sin. You have even more kill gadgets you've held off using so far. This is a very cool use of this character's abilities and gives Aza Gonzalez a killer moment in an otherwise wasted role. It's too bad the rest of the movie couldn't follow this one scene's energy and ingenuity. 20 Quid says in the sequel we find out this is Tony Stark tech and that Dr. Harding was humiliated by Stark at the same conference Mysterio attended. Also, <laughs> sequel. I was wondering why this building with all this secret expensive tech would have a large glass elevator system. And clearly, it's so if there's ever a fight in the shaft between two He-Men, it would look a lot cooler. If Wiggins can hack into KT's breather to keep Guy Pierce from killing her with it, why can't he hack into Knife Dude and Iron Spider Bro and like shut them down the way they shut down Ray earlier? Movie takes an hour and 35 minutes to bloodshot. It's really odd that Dr. Harding is moving in real time and Ray is in cool motherfucking slow motion walk mode. If he doesn't stop, I won't be able to bring him back. But he does, so absolutely none of this sequence has any consequences. And I just can't give a fuck about anything this movie has to offer. Ray survives this. Is that money? Post-it notes? Half this thing looks like a medical trailer, so what's up with all the weird paper storage for probably money? You don't gotta keep refilling the gas tank. Not at all. Nothing like a big convenient movie bow to wrap your now invincible superhero up in right at the end. If Vin ever was able to get another one of these made, it would be hands down the least consequential action movie ever made. Yay? Well, I killed all the old merch in a ritualistic bonfire, and from the ashes rose a new merch enterprise. <laughs> Grab a cloaca, cast a stone, or do the cliche fan thing and sip yummy out of a sexy mug. Enter code DING for a discount because you are amazing fans and we appreciate you. Now, f up and go get your sweet new swag. Link below or find our store at cinemasins.com. What do you want? I want a Winnebago. You must get Neo out! He's all the fathers! Look who it is! <laughs> Who's that? Damn it, Gina! They call me Mr. Tibbs. Tommy! How's the peeping? Boy, you are in for a show tonight, son. Six inches is not a lot. The inches we need are everywhere around us. Can you hear me? Are we on Vox? No. What is this place? You did good, Ace. Thanks to you, those insidious shapeshifters will threaten our borders no more. Revenge is what makes a man like you exceptional, Ray. You thought this was gonna be a street fight? You're goddamn right it is. Okay, start the sequence. We'll alter it real time. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! They're breakdance fighting! <laughs> 